Hey everybody, it's Becky from Harp Strings and Wings. Today's video is all about how to plan with having or managing a chronic illness or chronic pain. It's hard to plan, <laughs> essentially, but I think I found a way around it and I can't wait to share it with you. The planner I'll be using in today's video is just this basic day designer. Um, I really like it because it has a weekly layout and the weekly layout just gives you the days, what you can put during the day, what's going on, and your to-do list. And then it also gives you the, for the weekends as well. And then it gives you like a to-do and some notes at the end. I really like this because it's a binder uh, type, or what do you call this, ring <laughs> thing? I'm not sure what, what to call that. Anyway, it helps it to lay flat so it's easier to write and it's also like really easy to look at the whole week together. So I wrote an example schedule of what, you know, I would assume would be kind of like what um, a person with chronic illness or chronic pain would be um, dealing with. Perhaps they work full time, perhaps you work part time, um, you probably have a doctor's appointment once a week, um, you're managing pain, um, you're trying to fit in all of the life things that make life balanced like exercise and gratitude and uh, meditation and all of those types of things. Um, and they can really be tricky to fit in. So I really wanted to um, do the easiest form and that's the first part um, is just listing your top three for the day. If this is all you can do, perfect. You've got, you don't need a planner for it really. You could just um, use a to-do list or whatever. And every day you just write out your top three. In this example, I put your top three would be something like work, keeping up on the dishes and laundry, because those are like daily chores that need to be done um, so we can function. <laughs> and um, you might also have a doctor appointment. So it's very flexible. It gives you a lot of time to just like, um, when you feel good enough to do it in, during your day, you can, you know, kind of gauge and see how you're feeling um, and be really flexible with fitting those tasks in and out for your day. The second example, I wanted to take like a, maybe a typical, maybe a busier day and uh, look into what's going on. Um, perhaps you work during the day and then at night there's some kind of something going on, either if it's a social engagement or maybe it's like um, um, a kid's sport or event or some kind of extracurricular event that's happening in the evening. So this is a packed day. This is the day is that, you know, you're gonna feel like rough the next day. So you wanna be able to pace yourself. Um, so on those days, um, you know, usually you can, if it's a packed schedule, just like perhaps take a rest day, um, maybe just going for a walk or for 10 minutes or something like that to help manage um, stress would be great. I think it's really important and I know you've heard the benefits too of doing a daily gratitude journal. And daily would be great, that would be well awesome, but three times a week is probably more realistic and um, I think it can put you in the right mind frame um, and changing your perspective on um, what you can be thankful for. And so that it's not just the pain staring at you in the face every time you wake up in the morning. And then something else I'd like to do is um, choose a daily chore. Um, and this gets skipped a lot, to be honest, but if I manage getting it done like every other week or so, the house survives. So a daily chore would be like um, maybe vacuuming or um, sweeping or mopping or um, maybe you have some office work to do, um, emails to get back to, you know, phone calls to make, appoint appointments to make, whatever you have to do. Um, this can be your like daily chore um, time in the day. And then don't forget to meditate and and breathe and have that decompressed like, you know, time at the end of your day um, so that you can release the stressors of the day as well.
The third day, kind of example day I have is a day off, a rest day. And I usually find by the chaos of the week, I don't know about you, by Thursday, I'm like, I'm done. I just want to rest and um, I want to take it easy and I don't want to do too much. So um, on this day, you could possibly schedule a doctor appointment. That might be a good day to do the doctor appointments because, um, you know, it's your rest day. Not that that's very restful, but it's a good time to just put all your focus into that if that's what the day's activity is going to be. Um, and, you know, you're going to be focusing on other things when that doctor appointment comes around, like your insurance referral, I can tell you that, um, depending on where you live, of course. <laughs> um, and then, you know, maybe you need to remember to ask your doctor about a medication refill or mention something about you know, um, your, your current health or situation that you're having. It's just at the top of your mind so that you can be like, I want to talk to my doctor today about this. And I don't want to be, you know, hurried during the appointment. And I want to remember what I want to talk about. I noticed that I have to do a lot of mental preparation before a doctor's appointment because like I get sidetracked, I think when I'm in there and I forget to ask, you know, um, the things that I wanted to ask going in. So um, again, on rest days, I still like to do the dishes and the laundry, even if it's just like putting a laundry load in and then getting it into the dryer. Sometimes that doesn't happen. And if that doesn't happen, I will just run the, the, the rinse cycle the next day <laughs> because it will stay in there for a full 24 hours and then it smells kind of funky. So <laughs> that's why I like to, um, you know, just do like one cycle of laundry, even if it doesn't mean like getting it into the dryer or um, folding it. Um, and then do something light with the movement like yoga and stretching. Um, I think that can really help. And then reading for your spirit and for your mind and for your health. This is, this is a good rest day activity. I don't know about you, but on the weekends, I like to um, kind of get out with the family. Um, and so whether it be like an outdoor type of thing or maybe we need to do a little bit of uh, shopping, you know, getting going to your local hardware store, or whatever it is, and or your clothing store, you know, you're picking up these things that you weren't able to get done during the week or whatnot. Um, so our family usually um, does like shopping trips on on Saturdays and we also reserve our eat out day um for that shopping day because um it's like you're tired from the shopping and it's exhausting right and you're all of you're like hangry your whole family is hangry so it's like, <laughs> it's a good time to be like hey we're out anyway and there's a restaurant right here let's go eat or grab takeout because of COVID um, or whatever you've got to do. It's nice to not have to be like, okay, I don't have to worry about preparing dinner and getting home. So we reserve our um, going out to eat night usually on Saturday. Sometimes Saturday nights are great for social events like date nights or girls night or whatever you've got going on. And, um, and I always wait to confirm with um, friends or family or what, you know, whatever, um, the day of, because you know, you never know how you're going to be feeling, you know, and, um, you still want to be invited. And so it's, it's that weird combination of like, yes, please still invite me. Please let me know that you still care and, and, and you'd like to see me. Um, but also I reserve the right to cancel <laughs> because I might be having a migraine that day and I'm not going to be feeling like going or I threw out my back or, you know, we have to have that flexibility with like friends and family to be able to say, I'm sorry, I just can't make it tonight. Can we reschedule? Sunday, Sundays are, uh, they're just great days. I love Sunday vibe days. Um, I like to take that day. I don't know about you, but like just Take the day to kind of feed your spirit and really connect with your family and connect with the outdoors. Um, I love getting the outdoor time. I also like to do a small like home project uh, with my husband. So this usually involves something that like I need help with. Um, and it's a project that you don't get to during the week. It's that extra stuff, you know, like 
um, sorting and recycling or uh, maybe cleaning out the garage or taking some stuff to Goodwill or whatever you've got to do that's that extra. Um, I like to reserve that for Sunday um, just because I know that I can have help with it and I also can dedicate enough time and figure out whatever time that is during the day you know, that Sunday that I can do it because it's like, you don't know how you're going to be feeling either. And again, as with anything, all of this is like, can be just put off to the next week, put off to the next, you know, especially based on how you're feeling, because that's the reality of trying to plan with chronic illness and chronic pain is, um, you're constantly bumping things to the next day or, um, rescheduling plans, you know, because, you have to remain so flexible with your health. On Sundays, I really like to take a day, that day to also plan for the upcoming week. Um, it just helps me see what's ahead. What do I need to do? Um, what What's coming up? Birthdays, doctor appointments, um, letting my husband know or family members know, hey, we've got this coming up this week. How are we gonna work out our schedule? <clears throat> Another fun thing my family likes to do is we love to just take a Sunday drive, not every Sunday, but like maybe two Sundays out of the month. We like to just explore the area where we live and go down streets we haven't gone down before. And um, we like to, you know, just drive around, see the foliage, um, take the back roads, discover a new pond or a lake or something. Um, and we like to like grab a donut hole for the the kiddo and I like to get some tea and he likes to get his coffee and and that's kind of like our thing and I I just love that routine. I look forward to it. I also learn much more about my area and um discover things like random hiking trails that I didn't even know existed in our neighborhood. And I like to take Sundays to take only about 15 to 20 minutes and do um one of the heftier chores, which is vacuuming. I've got this really thick carpet. It's really annoying. Um, and <laughs> I can't vacuum the whole house. I just don't have the energy and I don't have the ability. Um, so I choose a floor. Literally, I'm like, okay, it's the main floor and I'll vacuum the stairs today because I can do that in 15 minutes. Or, and then next week, like I'll, I'll focus on just vacuuming upstairs. Um, and at least it gets done. There are some months where I vacuumed only like once a month. I know I don't really want to be admitting that, but here I am. <laughs> it just, you have a bad flare month and that's what happens. You know, you can't, you can't, there's no way you can push a vacuum around. In the notes section, I like to write um, maybe some fun things that happened during the week, some funny quotes my daughter says, or um, uh, I like to write, what worked well during the week um, and what didn't, what needed tweaking. Say, okay, Fridays were just too chaotic with the whole at home Zoom thing, you know, <laughs> teaching your, with your kids being on Zoom for school and then like trying to fit in a chore, like that just did not happen, you know? So um, what, what can I try? Um, so maybe I can try cutting the chore down to maybe 10 minutes um, instead of the normal 30 that it takes or something like that. Let me know in the comment section like what you guys do and how you manage and um, it, especially with like social events and stuff I, I'd like to hear about that too because any ideas we can all learn from each other would be great, right? <laughs> so I hope you learned something from this video and I hope you enjoyed it and um, I hope you take care and I hope you start feeling better and being able to accomplish your dreams around managing chronic illness and pain. It isn't easy, but it sure does make you stronger. I'll talk to you later. Bye.